I don't really do like uh, raw recaps on this channel. There's plenty of other channels online that do stuff like that. I do recap the pay-per-views though. But I got to talk about last night's Raw. Just one thing I want to talk about. And that is the Cody Rhodes, Paul Heyman segment. It's rare. Well, maybe not so much nowadays in the past few months. But it's rare that I am so moved by a segment that I go back and watch it again. That I think about it long after it ends, that I really think about the implications going forward. And that Cody Rhodes, Paul Heyman segment from Raw last night, if you haven't seen the segment, I would highly recommend that you either go on the WWE YouTube channel or try to find a replay of Raw somewhere on the internet or even on social media because people clip it all the time and go watch that segment. I was completely mind blown. This right here, that segment is everything that I love and miss about professional wrestling. Along the way, maybe sometime in the 2000s, wrestling really stopped giving us that emotion, you know, that realism. One of the things that I love about wrestling, especially in the 80s and 90s, and even in the 2000s, let's say 2010s when it started to stop doing this, kind of became a clown show, is that the, the the story obviously wrestling is 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 predetermined it's a show it's not real but my god when you can bring in something real and powerful and compelling that we know is real even if it's fictional even if it's fictional but real to the person you know you really can can touch on things that are you know strong let me let me give you an example. The Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page feud from 2000, like the whole story from 2019 to 2021 was fantastic except for one problem. If you know about the business, if you know the, the, the story of the elite and you know the story they're trying to tell, you got it. You understand their history. You understand. But for new fans, they have no idea. During the pay-per-view, Full Gear 2021, I remember I had a friend of mine come over and he had no idea what the story was. And because AEW is so so focused on the internet crowd, which does piss me off, they didn't even provide a video package to give us at least the main story beats of the story. So if somebody's a new fan who was not following Ring of Honor, who was not following Kenny Omega, who was not following AEW for the past three years, you don't have any idea. So it's up to me or a friend to teach you the story. And that is what I think... It's a great story, but you have to know what's going on. With the Cody and Paul Heyman thing, if you got what's going on, it just added icing on the cake, but you still got the cake. The story was basically that in 2000, Dusty Rhodes went to ECW, which is true. I remember this. I have the VHS tapes of it. He feuded with Steve Carino, and Cody talks about how Paul Heyman kind of helped give Dusty his confidence back, and... Um, he paid him. And in 2000, nobody was getting paid in ECW. And Cody got emotional. And Paul did too because you gotta understand, and those of you who don't know this, Paul Heyman, at 19 years old, became friends with Dusty Rhodes. Dusty would let him into the booking meetings. Paul Heyman absorbed a lot of his booking knowledge from Dusty Rhodes in the Carolinas. So there's a whole rich history there. And you know that Paul Heyman has history with so many different people in the business. The Samoans, now with the bloodline, of course. Brock Lesnar, you know, Steve Austin. Like, there is so much... Paul Heyman, and just Paul Heyman by himself, has so much history with professional wrestling. Not just with ECW, but with cultivating talent, managing talent, you know. And the segment was beautiful. I mean, that was a beautiful segment. That was the best segment WWE's done in a long time. And we're coming off of one of the best segments at the Royal Rumble with the Sami Zayn turn and Sami Zayn attacking Roman Reigns. WWE is on fire right now. The Royal Rumble got a bunch of views. Their TV ratings are up. Like, we're not... I don't know if we're entering into a new boom period right now, but WWE's build to WrestleMania so far. We're only a couple of weeks in, but so far they got me. And I'm somebody who's been watching this shit since 89. I have spent hours and hours and hours of my life watching pro wrestling. And they got me right by the heart. 
Seeing Paul Heyman try to fight back tears. Seeing Cody Rhodes try to fight back tears. This is real to them. And then Paul Heyman's like, before Dusty died, he told me that you were his favorite son. Everyone's like, wow, like that's, that's powerful. What about Dustin? I don't know. I wish, I wish Dustin was in WWE. It does suck that he's in AEW because he would be so important to this storyline. If Dustin was in WWE, he would be such an asset with Cody against the bloodline. And notice that they're keeping Cody and Roman away from each other, at least for now. They're, they haven't had a, a face-to-face yet. That's, that's coming, though. That's coming. Probably the week after Elimination Chamber, I'm guessing. But uh, the story here, you know, Paul Heyman says that to him. And then right after, he's like, but Roman Reigns is the son he always wanted. And then Cody walks up to him, shakes his hand. Paul Heyman's terrified because there's no Roman there. And he's like, I'm going to get my payback, but not on you. I'm going to take it out on Roman Reigns when I take his championship. This was beautiful. Raw was an hour away from where I live, and I regretted not going to this show. Because this was a great segment. The Lesnar-Lashley segment was great. I really enjoyed this. I loved this segment. My God, this is the professional wrestling that I love. When you have real emotion and you can turn it into a story, obviously Dusty never winning the WWE Championship and Cody winning it for his ghost or whatever, like to give it to him spiritually... That's a beautiful story that we can all relate to because we all have fathers or father figures who we want to please. A lot of us have that and we want to overcome the the, the miscomings or the the failures of our parents. We, We can all relate to this. And Cody's like, a member of my family's never won the New York WWE Championship. No one's done it. But Dusty had it. But he didn't win because it was a DQ or it was a count out or whatever against superstar Billy Graham in the garden. Cody wants the title. I, um, I'm very into this. Cody Rhodes is ridiculously over. He's a needle mover. He's moved house show tickets. He's moved viewership. The guy is a legitimate star. Him jumping back from AEW was the best career move he could make. But think about this. Had Cody never left to do Impact, Ring of Honor, New Japan, and then later AEW, he would have never been the main star that he is now he had to go and make himself a star the prodigal son storyline that we saw from at wrestlemania right that Corey graves kept bringing up during the seth rollins match that's very appropriate here he is the prodigal son who left became a man and came back a man and it's beautiful storytelling and i cannot wait to see this story develop because yes sammy versus roman Has a lot of emotion behind it, but so does Cody versus Roman. And I, for one, am quite excited to see where this goes. Also, the story with Jey Uso. WWE is very intriguing right now. And really, that's what you have to do. You have to be intriguing and interesting. AEW, I don't mean to compare, but AEW's been putting on some great wrestling matches, but their shows aren't really that intriguing. When the show ends, you're not really left with this Oh, I can't wait for next week to see what happens because you you got a good match, but that's it. Whereas the way WWE's been booked, this storyline every week adds more and more to the character. Every week it adds more to the story. It, 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 It develops these characters. We're seeing arcs here. And Cody's mission to be champion is a phenomenal one. So I had to gush over this, y'all. I loved it. There's only a handful of angles we've seen the past 15 years that have come close to this one. And uh, this was fantastic. I cannot wait. 